Um, what I want to do, God's changed stuff up. And I wrestle with that. I really do. I'm going to be honest with you. Glenn, stay on the keys. Um, I wrestle with that because I battle flesh a lot. I know y'all don't, but I, I do. Um, but and I want the lights to come up if all possible. Because I want to see who I'm looking at. I don't want them to be able to sit there and close their eyes. I want to be able to, to speak a word with the power and the authority of God that I refuse to allow you to leave sick here today. I take authority over the devil, the demon, and hell. It's time for the church to be healed. It's time. And here's how I know what I'm talking about. Listen to me. All those Elkhorn family, those Facebook family, and all those watching my website, please. I want you to listen to this today. Today is Sunday, September the 27th. Somebody needs to go ahead and write that down in your notebook. Sunday, September the 27th, because what's getting ready to happen in your life, you're getting ready to leave transform, renewed. God is going to change you from the inside out. I know you may have walked in smelling good and looking good, but you can be a devil on the... So here's the deal. I want to give you all what God gave me, and I'm believing, I'm praying today that it's your healing Sunday. I seen a while ago, Pastor Joy, he said these words, how many of y'all need a healing? And just about everybody, everybody raised their hand. But here's the problem. That's all we do is raise our hands. So today, I want to show you something that God gave me. And this is going to be so brief. You're going to sit there and go, Brian, I can't believe it. Because I've got five points. And I had five points in a benediction. But God says, Brian, I want you to say this. And I'm going to say this. I'm going to obey God. Because he wins every time. Listen to me. There. The question is this. We, we all need healing. How many of y'all need healing? All right. Just look around. I want y'all to look around. Everybody in here just about raising their hand. I need healing. I know we're big about laying hands upon the sick and watching them recover. I believe that. I believe blinded eyes can still come open. I believe lame legs, if God touches them legs, they can walk in Jesus Christ's name. But watch this. I've been in this long enough to realize this. The church is sick. The church is sick. It is. The church needs to be healed. And it's hard for the church to be a hospital if the church is sick herself. It's hard for us to help somebody else if we're far from God our own self. Before the church can work and move in the gifts of the Spirit. Listen, the gifts of the Spirit are real. Whether you believe me or not, you've got to take it up with God one day. Every gift is from above. Every gift is still alive and works in the church today. How come we're not seeing it? The church is sick. The church is sick. The church is sick. The church is so sick it can't help the sick. So here's, here's how I know. This is all I'm going to give y'all. We're going to go right into invitation. Because some, I'm, I'm just excited to pray over somebody today and watch God deliver them. Here's how I know the church is sick. Here's how I know the church is sick. As of today, today, according to Barner Research, almost two-thirds of Christians, of churchgoers, 62% believe the coronavirus is a message from God. But they refuse to change the way they live. Yeah. We listen more to CNN and Fox News than we do the good news. We listen to people and the media. We, we listen to what others think. Either this Jesus stuff is real or let's go home. Either the, we can get through this together as God's children and bind this old spirit on earth and walk in victory and walk in love and walk in grace and walk in mercy. We got to do this. We got to do this. But 62% of the believers today, churchgoers, me and you, 
And I've heard this. Believe that the coronavirus is a message from God. God's doing it again. But they refuse to change the way they live. 57%, listen to this, 57% of regular churchgoers say they've never had a spiritual encounter that changed their life. My God, they ain't saved. They ain't saved. Y'all lean in, listen, you ain't saved. You can't tell me that a God who stepped out onto nothing and it was dark upon all creation what the word says and God says let there be light and not just Kentucky lit up the whole world the whole universe including me and you then God says in Matthew 5 he says you are the light you are the salt but you got 57% of churchgoers to say they've never had a spiritual experience that changed their life. I can tell too. Church people hurt people. I'm going somewhere. Three out of four so-called Christians, I put so-called, they had, they had in the Barner research, they had, they had Christians. I said, no, 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 no. Three out of four so-called. Christian church goes seven, listen to this mic, 74% never share or have a spiritual conversation with anyone. You know why? They blame it on the preacher. They blame it on the deacons. Why ain't they visiting? Why ain't they doing this? Why ain't you? Come on. So easy. To step back and say, they should do this and they should do that. We are the family of the Most High God. All you got to do is share your story. All you got to do is tell somebody what God has done for you. Where God has brought you from. And that right there all by itself will uh, uh, lead people to the cross. Listen to this, so good. Y'all right? Say, I'm all right. Listen to this, man. Two-thirds of all churches are experiencing no growth. No salvation. 38,000 Southern Baptist churches report no salvation, no baptism. But we believe in the Holy Ghost. No, you don't. Because you got man running church. 59% of church go. If this is making y'all mad, I hope it makes you so mad you do something. 59% of churchgoers believe. Listen to this. Churchgoers. Believe that pornography is morally acceptable. Yeah. And it's a higher rate on abortion. <laughs> 67% of churchgoers are addicted to porn. 2001, I was at uh, Southern at the Southern Baptist Convention in St. Louis, Missouri. And they had a room, we, we was checking into our, our motel and there was a room that says adults only. And is everybody okay? Listen, don't tune me out, because listen, I'm telling you, this is a word that help you. I looked up and uh, the big convention, 10,000 pastors and leadership of all churches was there and this man was there, he was checking us in. I looked up and I said, well, I bet it's gonna be a bad weekend for you. He looked at me and he said, oh no. He said, we sell more porn during the convention than we do all year. We want more of God. He's here. God is here. But you can't be a dirty vessel and hold the presence of God. God is, God is one. I believe with all my heart. That Jesus Christ is standing up today saying, I want to heal. I want to deliver. I want to set free. I don't want nobody to die and go to hell. I want to bless the church. But the church is dirty. Fifty, fifty-one percent of churchgoers, the church. Listen to this. Fifty-one percent of the church. Listen, I know we're up in Kentucky and everybody believes the Bible. And if everybody dies, everybody, everybody's saved, everybody goes to church, everybody's a member. I've never preached a funeral where they said, man, 
I know they went to heaven. I was like, dude, they live like hell. Listen to me. This is real. This is some real stuff right here. And this may be the only time I get to preach to some of you. But listen to this. They, 51% of churchgoers, the church says the Bible, God's holy word, was written for each person to interpret as he or she chooses. I, listen, I hear it all the time. Somebody will take the gift of tongues, and here's what they'll say. Oh, it was just good for Peter in Acts chapter 2 in that day. Watch this. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. If he done it for Peter, he'll do it for me. And listen, there's got to be a time that you quit picking and choosing and saying, God, this works for me. This don't work for me. Mama believed this. Mama didn't believe that. All the Bible's real. From Genesis to Revelation and everything in between. We don't get to pick and choose what God says. God owns us. We don't own God. Somebody help me preach in here today. It's the truth. It's the truth. Y'all want to see some bylaws? Go. Hey, I almost spoke in tongues. Y'all want to see some bellows? Matthew chapter 22. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. And hang the rest of the laws upon these two commands. I'm preaching better than y'all acting. Here's what I'm saying. If you love God and you love your neighbor. Oh, God. It's all right, all right. Preach that preacher. I think I will. 70% of church goers have never... Invited anyone to church. I, I asked the lady this week, I said, have you ever invited anybody to church? And she's like, uh-uh. Listen to this, Jack. I said, how come? Here's what she said, Willie. And I couldn't believe it, Chris. Y'all, y'all, this is my side today. She said, there's too much trouble in our church. Too much going on. <laughs> I don't want to invite somebody to my church because they may see the ugliness of church. Sad. There should be so much love in here today that somebody who is wayward, somebody who is backslidden, somebody who don't even know Jesus Christ, that they should walk in there and say, my God, I'm at home today. I feel God today. I feel something in this house today. Yeah, that's what they should. Listen, as of today, check it out, Barna Research, because I know some of you is going to go, <laughs> sorry, Barna Research, check it out. As of today, 10, a little bit over 10,000 churches have closed their doors. <laughs> that hurts when we got the answer. <laughs> we, we've got the answer. We've got the answer. But today, a little over 10,000 churches have closed their doors. Why? The church is sick. We're blessed, but we can get better. Y'all got me? We're blessed in this house. But we have not arrived. Let me give you this, and I'm going to wrap this up. Here's what hurt me. I wanted to save this for last, and this is where I'm going to land a big plane. Lastly, 72%, almost three-quarter, three out of four of churchgoers that have left their church or quit going to church openly admitted this, openly admitted this, that they left because of unforgiveness, hurt, anger, or bitterness. I'm going to let that preach all by itself. Three out of four people that leave a church, they leave because of unforgiveness, bitterness, hurt. I see it every day of my life. Every day of my life. I had a young man this week on a Friday night. He looked at me and he said these words. He said, I said, you still go to so-and-so church? He said, oh, no. He said, uh, I live, this was a leader. I left last week. And I said, what'd you leave for? And he said, man, he said, uh, they tried to put me here and make me say this and this, that, and the other, blah, blah, blah. And I said, so where are you going now? And here's what he said. Here's what he said. He said these words. He said, I'm going to start a church. And so, listen, y'all, don't tell me that. 
We've got enough churches in this community. And if somebody leaves here and gets mad and tries to start a church, watch, you ready? I'm, I'm, I'm going to preach a Bible. That is unbiblical. God will never honor trying to build his church on a mad, bitter, angry, unforgiving person. That is unbiblical. Y'all don't have to like it if you don't want to. It's truth. It's truth. We've got 131 churches in Taylor County. Stop it. Stop it. I told this young man, he said, what would you do if you was me? I said, you don't want to ask me. I said, you need to go back and ask for, for, for forgiveness. Because what you're doing, you're leaving a church because your feelings are hurt. Why, can, I just be, can, I just, can we put our big boy pants on just for a moment? How many of y'all are married in here? That's a great number. How many of y'all always get along? If your hand goes up, I'm going to lead you to Jesus right here, right now. Come on, let's have some church in here today. Yeah. Me and Dino, we don't always get along. I tell her she's wrong a lot. <laughs> Y'all know where that gets me, couch. But here's what I know. I told Dana Raff for this, and I'm going to tell Elko, listen, there's some of you who need to make your minds up. I told Dana, come hell or high water. Good times or bad times. In sickness and in health. You got me, and I got you, and God's got both of us, and we ain't going nowhere. What God puts together, no man can separate. Somebody give God praise in here today. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you, ma'am. Make your minds up. Mm. Make your minds up in this house. Make your minds up in here. Elkhorn's my place where I worship. This is my home. This is where God's got me at. I may not like the preacher. The preacher may not like you. But... See, y'all are... The difference between me and you is this. You'll never know. You'll never know. Because everybody here today, I'll wash your feet. I'll wash your feet. You cuss me out, I'll wash your feet. You put me on topics, Facebook, slam me, roll over me on a bus, I'll wash your feet. I'm not going to let anything, y'all watch, stop what God is doing in my life. I'm not going to let a man, I'm not going to let a church, I'm not going to let nobody stop what God is doing in my life. He's done brought me too far. So here's, here's the deal. We got, we got a, lot of, a lot of things to do. It's 11 on 6. We got a lot of things to do. Every one of you raised your hands, you need a healing. And I can give an invitation now, and your, your, your favorite song is, I Shall Not Be Moved. This side's mad at this side. This side's mad at this. Lord, we want you. We welcome you. We'll forgive your neighbor then. Mm, mm, mm. For, matter of fact, God, Holy Ghost just told me, remind them of Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11, if you read, the, if you read your Bible, verse 24 and 25, it says these words. You say unto this mountain, be ye removed, and it will be cast into the sea. But the next verse is down. It says, but. If you've got unforgiveness. Come on this side. Come on, come on, come on. If you've got unforgiveness. I'm preaching better than y'all acting. If you've got unforgiveness in your heart, in your life. God says, I won't even hear your prayers. Some of you are praying and it's hitting you right back upside your head. Because you have unforgiveness in your life. I am begging you. You, you. Slow down, Brian. The biggest cancer in churches today is not cancer. It's unforgiveness. Today, I promise you, and I, I'm not one of these pastors going to get up here and go, the Lord told me 10 people today has unforgiveness. I don't what. There's probably more. 
I'm telling you today, under the authority and under the unction of God, if you've got unforgiveness in your heart, God is not even hearing your prayers right now. How does that make you feel? You can watch. You can be here. You can throw them hands up. You can speak in tongues. You can prophesy. But I'm telling you today, if you, youth group, listen, y'all will never go forward until y'all forgive each other. Now watch this. You ready, youth group? Adults! Yeah, get them kids, boy. I mean, that's a bad generation right there. Get them. No, they're not. Greater is he that is in them than he is in the world. This youth group here is going to change South Central. I'm telling y'all don't have to believe me. You don't have to believe a word I'm saying today. I believe in them. Adults, what about you? Uh-huh. Your boss. Your wife. Your husband. Your preacher. Your deacon. The person sitting behind you that you've been ignoring all. So I'm done. Here's what I wrote in my notes. Y'all okay? Everybody say, I'm okay. How many of y'all glad to come to church today? Yeah, me too, me too, me too, me too, me too. The American church is sick. And I'm not talking about with a disease. There are some of you who are so healthy, you won't even go to the doctor. But spiritually, you're sick. I, I think I'm at the right house. Some of you are sick. And I'm a firm believer, if the church gets healed today, today, if the church gets healed, the land to get healed. <laughs> We're not waiting on God. We're not waiting on the protesters to leave Louisville, Kentucky. We're not waiting on that. I believe God's waiting on me. And God's waiting on you. So I'm gonna, let's be a big boy, big girl here today. Y'all ready? If you've got unforgiveness in your heart, I'm calling it out today in Jesus Christ's name. I'm tired of playing patty cake church. Watch this. Patty cake church will send you straight to hell. I want to know I've been in the presence of God. I want to know. 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 Because I'll change. And here's how good he is. If I've hurt any of you, it's not my heart. It's not my heart. But here's what I know, being a public speaker and being a pastor, you got a bullseye on your back. If you're in leadership, watch this, you ready? Welcome to leadership. So I'm going to ask y'all this side, this side, all, all of us here today. Have you got unforgiveness in your heart? If so, I had five points. I'm not going to give you five points. We'll be here to two o'clock. Come back next week and we may go five, two, three, two, one. So I don't know. But all I know is this. It's time. How many of y'all agree the church is sick? Come on, raise your hand. If you, if, yeah, some of y'all been church hurt. I'm going to ask you, have you went back to that church and asked for forgiveness? You said, Brian, the preacher hurt me. Matthew 18 says these words. If you have been offended, if you have been offended, you go back to that person. You try to make it right with them. Are y'all listening to me this morning? You try to make it right with them. If you cannot save and spare your brother, you take a witness back with you. Y'all got me? We're out of order. We're out of order. I promise y'all, if Dana offends me, I ain't gonna come talk to you. <laughs> no. I'm gonna go to my bride. I'm going to say, honey, we got a problem. If Bobby Walker, my father-in-law, offends me, and he has, I'm not going to go to Tracy and Perry and say, you see what Bobby did to me? You're out of order. Come on, church. You're out of order. The Bible says if that person has offended you, you take your bad self, you take your own self to them first 
And if you don't save your spare, your brother, your sister, then you take a witness. And then, let's go step three, y'all ready? If they don't listen to you then, it says bring them before the church. <laughs> Chris, you don't see that very often, do you? <laughs> no, you know why? Because everybody wants to fight. Everybody wants to fuss. Everybody wants to be right. Everybody wants to prove themselves right and how bad the other person is. And I'm just telling y'all this. If you will go to that person, if that person is full of the Holy Spirit... And they got love in their life. They're probably going to hug your neck and y'all going to kiss and make up. If you two men do it from the side. But anyway. We're out of order. We're out of order. Are y'all listening? Somebody say amen. I look, I'm looking at some of you right now. You're so distracted. You're so distracted. You're so distracted. And you're probably the ones holding unforgiveness. So, I'm done. That's the third time I said it, so Glenn, I guess you by yourself today. Are y'all ready to have an altar call? Not for real. If you've got unforgiveness in your heart, I'm begging you, I'm asking you, come to this altar. Be a big man, be a big woman. Come on, come to this altar and say, God, I am offended at so and so. Watch, he already knows it. He already knows it. And I promise you, listen, if that man or that woman knows Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, it's done. Can I tell y'all one more story and I'll, I'll land a plane? There was a, a lady, me and Dana let her borrow $100, $100. And uh, years went by, years went by, years went by, and she didn't pay me back. She didn't pay us back. And so Dana came to us and she, she came to me and she said, Brian, she said, uh, I think we need to call her. Now I looked at Dana and I said, we ain't calling her. I said, we're going to pray. And boy, Brian, that sounds good. That's a good preacher answer. Prayer changes everything. Everything. This is a true story. So we prayed. We started praying. This young lady, about a month later, come back. And she said these words. Brian, Dana, the Lord. Listen to what she said. It's so good. So good. The Lord woke me up. And she said, this slipped my mind, but I owe y'all $100. And she said, I'm going to pay you Sunday at church. And here's what the Lord told me, forgive her. Because what was more important to me, what? Is not the $100 bill in my pocket, but it's that she got things right with God. She knows her Savior. She knows her Redeemer. That's the most important thing. So, man, we showed her grace. Keep the $100. God bless you. We prayed a prayer for her. And she was $100 richer. See, I'm, go ahead and stand up because I can go on forever about unforgiveness. I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm done. Y'all come back and I'll give you the five steps that we got to take. But here's the first. Y'all ready for the first step? It starts with you. Yeah. It starts with you. It's, watch, quit blaming people. For the way you act, you act like a fool all by yourself. You acting cray cray all by yourself. Your mama don't make you drink. Your daddy don't make you drink. But I know a man. If you meet him at the well, he'll give you some living water, and you'll never thirst again. But you gotta meet him at the well. So, Father God, have your way. I don't know what's gonna happen in here today, God, but I'm excited. I'm excited, God. I've done what you told me to do. Lord, bless this side. Bless this side. Bless these precious people. Bless this side, God. I pray, Lord, that we walk out. Y'all watch. That we all 100% walk out today healed in Jesus Christ's name. No unforgiveness. No bitterness. No hatred. No anger. Listen, some of you just need to leave right now and get on your phone. Y'all, 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 y'all got, I want this to happen. You need to make it right. If you're waiting on somebody else, watch this. You're out of order. 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 God is talking to you right now. I know He is me. And I've got three people I've got to apologize to. So y'all just follow me. <laughs> Lord, we bless you. Lord, we want your spirit. Lord, touch me today in a special way. I'm trying to. I want to. I want to bless you and show you the favor of God. I want to keep anointing you. But Brian, you've got unforgiveness in your heart and in your life. And until you deal with number one, you'll get never get number three. 
some of y'all need to forgive your spouse. Some of y'all need to forgive each other. So welcome to church. Y'all ready? Father God, here we are. Lord, I command in the name of Jesus Christ. That God, we just forgive each other. We just forgive each other, God. Here's what God just spoke to me. Y'all ready? It's the word from God. He said, you need to forgive that person the way I forgave you. Hmm? You, this side, I'll talk to you. You need to forgive that person the way God forgave you. This side. I don't know where y'all are. I don't know what you're dealing with. But I love you. I love you enough to speak truth over your life. You need to forgive that person the way that God has forgiven you. You, you need to forgive whomever. Brian, you don't know how they've treated me. Watch. Watch. I, I, watch. You're automatically, your mind is automatically going back, going back. Going, stop it. Stop it in the name of Jesus. You need to forgive that person the way that God has forgiven you. This side. My rowdy side today. Y'all need, we need to forgive that person the way that God has forgiven us. How has God forgiven y'all? How has God forgiven y'all? How has God forgiven y'all? How has God forgiven this side? So Father God, have your way. Thank you God for speaking today. Thank you Lord that we can have church. And even though Lord it may be tough, we feel the grace, the love of God in this place. Lord, I pray from the front to the back, side to side, top to bottom, that, Lord, everybody in here today, Lord, everybody in here today, God, would walk away healed, delivered, and set free. God, we've all been hurt. Lord, we've all been hurt in this house. We've all been hurt. But, God, I'm not going to live hurt. I'm not going to live hurt. I'm not going to live bitter. I'm not going to live angry. I'm not going to live with unforgiveness in my life. Today, I call that spirit out. So, Lord, have your way. Bless these precious people. Use them for your glory. And, God, I'm looking for a miracle today. I'm looking for a miracle today. I'm looking for a miracle today. I already see a bunch of miracles here today, God. I see a bunch from the front to the back. So, God, have your way. In Jesus' name, somebody give God praise in here today. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Come. come on. Inside. Come on. Let's make this stuff right. Come on. Don't just stand there. Let's make this stuff right today. Let's give God glory in here today. I am forgiven, so I got to forgive you. In Jesus' name, y'all come. In Jesus' name.